Entry 001. Once upon a time, innocent people were summoned to a completely different world. But not everyone was called, not even the country or the city, but only a small part, only one block. Entry 103. The summon part becomes the playing figure of terrifying creatures, players. Players roll the dice and move the pieces. Depending on where the piece stops, a mission will be granted. A figure that does not cope with the mission is destroyed along with all the people who were in it at that moment. The records of the people of the destroyed figure 76 are imbued with sadness and hope that they will be discovered and help them survive. In no case should you go against the players. Their strength is incomprehensible and no weapon will help against them. Out of nowhere, the hope of the inhabitants of figure 76 was justified. An unknown man found those very records. The written strategies are really good, but they did not bring any value to the man. The only thing he disagreed with was that the players were invincible, and at the same moment he rushed into battle. Incredible strength and power in an ordinary human body, floating in the endless cosmic wasteland. The players are not immortal and are not gods. Right now, one of them has fallen at the hands of a man, one of his pawns. With proper skill and a suitable handbook, then even powerful creatures become unable to resist. People are going to put an end to the terrifying game to fight back against players who do not value other people's lives. An ordinary day, an ordinary city, none of the inhabitants could have expected such horrific events. It was a shock for the most ordinary people. It was the last peaceful day in their lives. There is no longer an endless city and a stretching earth under their feet. Now they are part of a figure that they do not yet know about. The confused thoughts of people in terrible shock are interrupted by a notification as if from a game. Before they have time to come to their senses, the problems do not end, and a giant cube flying from the sky falls into their eyes. It rapidly falls on the glass dome enclosing the relocated area. The number three visible on this dice portends the movement of the piece three squares forward. A moment ago, people stood in shock, and an even greater defeat for them was the feeling of the earth moving away from under their feet. The figure began to move. Another notification that appeared in front of people, a defense mission lasting three days. Another figure grows out of the ground, another location, clearly joining the block with people. A mountainous area appeared in front of the uncomprehending citizens. Silhouettes began to be seen in the vastness of which they began to see. With each new notification, the panic increases. People will have to defend their bases, otherwise the figure will be destroyed and everyone will die. The hundred-sided cube ends up in the hands of ordinary people. Thanks to it, they have the opportunity to get their class and equipment. But no one had time to figure out what was happening, and the previously noticed silhouettes began to show their images. These were terrible monsters. The creatures rushed at people who did not understand the whole situation. Some of them tried to escape and called for help, and some did not manage to escape. The orc attacked the man who understood the situation the most and showed composure, but still he could not escape. A game of dice with gods, then with demons. Only vagueness and hopelessness remained. The peace must be defended. Furious monsters, monsters with lifeless eyes, are looking for their new target. For them there is nothing but cruelty. They couldn't expect that there would be a person who could stand up to their terrifying strength. Nor could humans expect to have the strength to resist the monsters that attacked them. An ordinary girl, a simple villager, but her weapon was the legendary spear of the empirical dragon. It granted her the power of the flame dragon. Calm and cold, she gave all her strength to protect people, trying to save as much as possible, calm and help. Her words clearly had an effect on the rescued, and still in a panic, they began to follow the girl's orders. The rolled dice gives people equipment of a class depending on the number rolled. Now they can fight for their lives, but this very life will no longer become ordinary for them. On the first day, countless lives were taken away by bloody and brutal events. Survivors became heroes for everyone, gaining amazing abilities. Yule was one of the first to be attacked by monsters, but fate decided that he would not die like this at the very beginning. From his bloody hands fell the cube that he had been holding from the very beginning, slowly and precisely, rolling across the field. Stopping his movement, he could see the number 100, which meant that he was now stronger than all the others combined. A mythical book of the demon king of personal gain appeared before the almost lifeless Yule. It grants knowledge unattainable to others. But this book had one peculiarity. Anyone who uses information from the book becomes a victim of its owner. 
Three long hours have passed since the start of the mission. Thousands of people have been killed and many more wounded, and one of the figure's bases has been destroyed. The exhausted inhabitants had nothing left but to fight. They fought together for their own and others' lives. There was a minute for respite, and a truck approached the distracted heroes at high speed. The armed men who ran out of the truck were army soldiers who immediately began to rescue the wounded. The man thanked the girl who came to the rescue, saluting her and taking her aside. Thanks to it, the armed forces managed to mobilize and split into detachments to send support to all areas in need. According to the plan, they need to go to the next point, as well as establish a connection between them. The conversation is interrupted by a bloodied Yulia limping towards the people who have just spoken. He claims that this is not the time to relax. Very soon the nightmare will continue and the boss of this mission will appear. Showing the text from the book, he tries to prove that it contains all the information about the mission, but to them, the book looks empty. The completely white pages do not evoke any feelings on faces and cause a discussion that he may be the only one who sees the recordings. A cold soldier, he cannot trust unconfirmed information, so he has to prove it. The data on the set from the directory was not only as accurate as possible, but also had details previously unknown to the owner. The information not only had a description of objects, but also contained personal data, even the most intimate secrets. All suspicions of lying were dispelled, since the information provided could not have been falsified or obtained in advance. Having contacted the headquarters, it was clear that it was certainly a risk to trust the information of a passerby but there were no other options. Taking the walkie-talkie in his hands, Yule began to describe the situation, noting that the monsters attack in waves every six hours, and at the end, the boss is waiting. The boss is a two-headed orc, the embodiment of nightmare and cruelty. It is a difficult task to confront him because he uses not only weapons, but also magic. Thanks to Yulia's help, people managed to develop the most detailed action plan to minimize casualties. He helps in saving many people, but at the same time, he does not forget about the future, thinking about the possibility of returning to his native world. The words of the young guy surprise the white-haired girl. There is still hope for her, and she flares up with a bright flame. But no one yet knows that everything will be received only by the owner, because any transfer of information, even rumors, monopolizes the rewards. After a while, a bloody battle with the boss really began, led by a guy who owns a mythical reference book. The wielder of the legendary spear rushed into battle with the main monster of this wave, leaving a trail of fire in her wake. Her hair took on a bright golden hue of fire. The monster with whom the battle was fought was defeated. 91% of the population became victims of Crossing's handbook. The beginning of the sins of a young guy who possesses all the information of the world has been laid. Repeated waves of monsters resembled a game. One side periodically attacked, the other prepared to defend. At the first level of difficulty, enemies do not have intelligence. So with the right strategy, the situation is turned to their side. Defenders spare no effort and resources to achieve their goals, survival, and struggle. Wounded and escaping monsters fall directly into the hands of owners of high-level equipment. The information in the book depends on the current situation, what was in the hands of the defense. Their strategies are the best and most effective. The soldiers had already reported on the situation at the time of the mission and it seemed that Yule was in command of the entire population of the figure. This guy is not just the owner of an incredibly powerful book. He also proves his ability to manage and use raw data. It's time to fight the final boss, and the defense mission will be completed, the final test of an incredibly huge monster. The girl woke up, barely having time to catch her breath, when the shadow of the boss was already rushing behind them, and the man had already begun to tear off the pin. The grenade flew in the direction of the monster with lightning speed, blinding it with a bright light. But they did not stop as they continued to move forward. The Hulk waved his arm with such force that the ground shook, forcing them to deviate from their original trajectory. What the hell? the girl exclaimed. The shockwave didn't hit them. Only a strong wind swept by, leaving them unharmed. They were driving towards the city, but on their way there, the bases would be destroyed like houses of cards in front of a torrent of a strong whirlwind. Fortunately, the boss was slow and unstable to the elements, and a flurry of attacks would destroy him like a grain of sand in the path of a whirlpool. But the only one who could resist was that girl, surprised by this fact, who would be the last hope in this fight. 
In the rays of the bright flames that flared up during the battle, she stood surrounded by a fog of doubt, facing a great test. At this time, Yule learns about the hidden abilities of her spear, which are revealed depending on certain conditions. He is aware that he has knowledge of all the conditions necessary to unlock the hidden abilities of this weapon. The girl enters the battle again, doubting whether she will succeed, but in the depths of her heart there is an irresistible desire to win. Through force and distrust, she decides to trust the information Julia provides, realizing that this may be the key to her success. At this time, the boss's hands, like ominous shadows, strive to strike, but she, concentrating all her will, prepares to counterattack. The monster's hands reached her, but when the conditions were met, everything flashed with light, giving her the last chance to escape. Summoning a powerful force, the skill Prometheus's Fang flashes, and the battle flares up in the fire of passionate battle. Only once during the mission can you summon the majestic empirical dragon, and the girl succeeded. The threatening boss feels fear, realizing that the power of the summoned dragon is too great, like mighty thunder above his head. The dragon spews flames, and there is no trace of the monster that has just threatened, like a grain of sand in a turbulent wave of mighty fire. The dragon's flames cause a huge explosion, and if it were to happen in the city, there would be nothing left but destruction and ash. This sight shocks the soldier, and fear of the power of the knowledge described in the book flares up in his heart. The skill ends, and Yule approaches the girl to help while everything around her continues to burn with the flames of destruction. They disappear from the battlefield, instantly appearing in the city, where the defense mission is officially completed. People chant the names of the heroes, and they shy, come out to the rest, battered and exhausted, but proud that they were able to defend their city. Residents receive notifications about the rewards for completing the mission, including points that they can spend on various things and upgrades. The primary task is the treatment of the wounded who received injuries and wounds during the defense. Everyone around is surprised trying to test their glasses, but none of them received them due to the effect of personal gain. All the glasses went to Yulia, and he himself was shocked, not fully realizing the situation, puzzled by how this happened. His name had just been chanted with delight, but now the eyes of those around him were filled with anger and hatred. He had just been a hero, and now he had become an enemy of the people, and even those who were still trying to protect him faced the hostility of others. For him, this situation was also surprising because he knew nothing about what was happening, and now he was trying to justify himself to the crowd. Perhaps the points can be exchanged. This idea seems great and could be a way to remedy the situation to benefit society. The book blocks any exchange attempts, and people demand their points back. The hero finds himself in a dead end, not knowing what to do. He decides to destroy the book and asks the girl to burn it believing that this can help resolve the situation. Even after trying to destroy the book, it remains intact and ends up near him, leaving him completely confused. People insist on their glasses and Yule is in a panic. He cannot find a way out of the situation. Panic reigns in the city, and the demand for justice grows into a collective thirst for revenge and blood against a guy whose name is now not trusted. He still insists that there is a way to give everyone back their glasses by hesitantly flipping through the pages of a book in search of an answer. The soldier interrupts him, panic turning to fear as the barrel of the weapon approaches his head menacingly, as if death is already pulling him towards itself. The soldier orders to stop, convinced that this will be the best solution in the current situation. Loud shouts and the noise of the crowd fill the air. Yule is on his knees. He is arrested and accusations of fraud are carried everywhere. The soldier, not considering him guilty, whispers, Run! And the guy's eyes flash again with surprise at this unexpected support. Clenching his will into a fist, he decides to throw all his strength into correcting the situation. A new hope is born in his heart. The soldiers hold the crowd, and with incredible speed, Yule opens the in-game store, hoping to find a way to escape. After spending points on agility, he disappeared in the blink of an eye and everyone was left wondering, upset that they couldn't stop him. There is no time for respite, as everyone learns that the next mission is scheduled in 24 hours, and panic sets in again before a new test. The soldier, showing composure, commands and directs everyone to a safe zone, providing protection against an approaching threat. Crowds gather in the square, deciding who will stay to fight and who will be evacuated to ensure the safety of the city. Yule is now considered a people's enemy, 
and if someone notices him, he will have to immediately run away and report the guy's location. Soldiers are actively training, developing new strategies, and preparing for the upcoming tests. The city has plunged into gloomy tones, and people feel the turmoil, not knowing what to do in this tense situation. It's time for a new move, and the cube falls on the dome again, reminding us of the inevitability of new challenges and trials. Move forward four moves, and the game takes the piece to the Demon King's trial field. For five days, people will have to fight on a field dotted with three columns, while facing guards of the first difficulty. The first boss is a doomed fallen angel, only a skeleton with spread wings, radiating an unprecedented threat. The second boss is a mad brain that spawns monstrous creatures that only get stronger and more dangerous over time. The third boss is the goblin swordmaster Jack, the third level of difficulty, the embodiment of combat and unrivaled strength. The inhabitants rushed into battle, their determination indomitable, despite their attempts to stop the ill-considered attack. The armed forces were also preparing for battle, and some of them had already gone to the front line of battle. The established system collapsed in one day, and coordination became incredibly difficult, opening the door to chaos and disorder. Emma decided to throw herself alone at the strongest enemy, refusing to cause death to anyone else in this fierce battle. Burning with a flame of determination, she headed for battle with the goblin swordmaster, ready to fight him to her last breath. Without flinching or moving from his seat, the swordsman stopped the rushing attack on him, demonstrating his incredible skill and control over the situation. Pushing the girl away, he remained imperturbable and devoid of emotion, like a stone that did not succumb to weakness for a moment. He sat motionless, raising his sword, from which blue flames erupted, preparing to deliver a blow that would pierce the darkness with its might. The surroundings were enveloped in blue flames. Its blow was extraordinarily powerful, destructive, and majestic. Emma survives, and Yule saves her, carrying surprise and gratitude in his arms, on her face. She is pleasantly surprised by his heroism and devotion. They exchange brief words, while the guy, looking serious, decides to take the path of battle alone. After asking everyone to stay away from him, he takes out a cursed book and resolutely walks forward, preparing for a confrontation. Using the points he gains to level up, he becomes unsurpassedly strong, and the whole neighborhood will inevitably find out about it. The power overwhelms him, and he feels his skills grow, as if something much more powerful is awakening inside him. He rolls other people's dice, throwing aside any equipment except the legendary one, because it is the only one worthy of his greatness. Putting on the dropped equipment, he decides to defend the city at all costs, not even paying attention to how others treat him. Yule decides not to engage the goblin now, as he has other plans that require his attention. As he leaves the spot, he says, Wait for me, and his special shoes allow him to float in the air, giving him unprecedented speed. Emma looks after him, but he just walks away, and she's left wondering, trying to understand his decision. The monster just sits down, as if he understands the guy's words, and remains to wait for him to return to continue the fight. The girl is stunned, wondering if the monster really has a mind and is able to understand speech. The goblin does not start the attack first. He waits for someone to attack him. Perhaps he has some principles or action. Julie is aware of this behavior of the swordsman Jack, so he hurries to another place where he knows that his help is much more needed. He makes his way to the fallen angel, deftly maneuvering between the houses before he begins to shed blood. Without hesitation, he enters the fray, delivering a furious kick to the face while maintaining a straight face. Yuli's return causes discontent among people. He has used up all their points and his personality is surrounded by hatred. The guy doesn't care what others are talking about. He is absorbed in the battle and is busy developing a plan for the fight. He fights for the good, striving to fulfill the conditions and minimize losses, Yule aims to weaken the bosses, reducing the danger to everyone. He does not allow the angel to kill people, realizing that the monster will become stronger if he kills a hundred. A guardian who fulfills the conditions will become much stronger, and he will not care about the defense. He will go to thoughtless murders. Yule seeks to get rid of the most dangerous threats, and although everyone considers him an enemy, in fact, he acts in the name of everyone's safety. The fierce fight between the angel and the enemy of the people comes to an end. Both are rapidly heading for the ground. Yul, with his outstanding intellect and mighty strength, seems to be an impossible enemy, but his motives remain an unsolved mystery. 
Under the influence of the guy's blow, the angel instantly falls to the ground with incredible speed, like a whirlwind touching everything around. This powerful vortex destroys military vehicles, destroys the asphalt, and wreaks havoc in its path, creating images of destruction and disorder. The soldiers remained unharmed, but they are amazed by what is happening and are unable to understand what happened before their eyes. They meet their enemies. Yule holds a sword over the angel's head, instilling fear and anxiety in them. He stands on the corpse of the guard, his face expressionless in fear, like a stone, motionless and indifferent to the chaos around him. His weapons are legendary, capable of transforming parts of slain monsters into valuable items, giving him a unique power. He is silent, not communicating with anyone, and leaves again, leaving only a trace of his presence, mysterious and incomprehensible. The soldier builds his theory. Perhaps Yule is silent because of the influence of the book, and he is still a hero and not an enemy, as everyone assumes. The second one could not believe his eyes. Seized with fear because the powerful guard had been defeated, it was necessary to report this to the headquarters. But the defeated monster did not cause fear because he stands up in a rage since the battle condition has been met and his strength has only increased. The angel undergoes a transformation, raises his level, and turns into a beast that has lost all control over itself. The terrifying beast of decay, steeped in sin, has acquired even greater terrifying power and is heading towards the standing soldiers. The sight of the beast fills soldiers with terror to the bone, and to them the world seems disgusting and ruthless. They are left without support, deprived of everything except the struggle for survival, a fight full of despair and determination begins. Fire rains down on the monster as they try to call for reinforcements. However, the situation becomes increasingly tense. The monster attacks in response and everyone barely has time to dodge because its size and strength are too huge. The monster instills fear and many, instead of fighting, try to escape from its terrifying aura. The influence of horror does not cover everyone and only Bruce continues to fight alone desperately resisting the monster. He does not think about himself. His only goal is to lead the beast away from people, hoping for the arrival of reinforcements that should help in the fight. At the last moment, the monster jumps, heading straight for him. Suddenly, goosebumps run all over his body. A huge hand pins Bruce to the ground, leaving nothing but blood in the gravity of the situation. Yuli's plan is being implemented. One task is completed, and there is no sadness in his eyes only determination and complete confidence. The monster looks around in disbelief as he sees Bruce's body being enveloped in green light. Screaming in pain, the ferocious beast becomes vulnerable. Defeating it becomes possible and comes closer. Exhausted but not broken, Bruce raises the flag, becoming stronger and able to continue the battle. From behind the edge of death, the helmet's hidden skill was activated, giving its wearer an unexpected power. Heldon's ghost pours into Bruce, giving him a power that greatly increases all of his stats. Bruce's will and power extends to all of his soldiers, and the monster that used to inspire fear is now terrified of their power. A ghostly squad engages in a fierce battle, and the beast has no chance to escape this terrible battle. Bruce commands all words, permeated with cold determination, clarity, and reasonableness, as if his voice is the law for everyone. Under the menacing onslaught of the ghostly band, the guard was defeated and cheers of joy after the victory swept across the battlefield. Yule was confident in keeping the whole situation under control, but he couldn't intervene directly, and his satisfaction was ripening inside him. He skillfully circumvented the system so that the merits went to Bruce's company, and his subtle skill in this was admirable. The goblin listened attentively, but could not find the words to answer. He was amazed at what he heard or what was being spoken to him at all. Although the goblin couldn't answer, Julia took pleasure in seeing his words penetrate the minds of others. Suddenly their sweet conversation stops and he again becomes cool and resolute as before. At this time, Emma was desperately fighting the robotic monsters, enveloping them in flames that glowed brightly in the darkness. She arrived at the scene immediately after the call for help. Her face was one of exhaustion and the further struggle became more and more difficult. There were too many opponents, and she fought them alone, realizing that time was not on her side. She needed to end the battle quickly. Realizing the criticality of the situation, Emma realized that the monsters were getting stronger, and it was necessary to retreat. Greed permeated the people, 
depriving them of understanding. They craved as many points as possible, confident that they could withstand the horde. Everyone has their own reason for fighting, whether it's greed, madness, despair, or overconfidence. They dare to fight the guardian of their own, having no idea of his true strength and abilities. Their gaze meets the cold, lifeless gaze of the guardian, which strips them of all confidence, replacing it with horror. Emma, with skill and determination, protects people by skillfully holding off the enemy's death beam. Even for such a strong girl, it is not easy to hold back this onslaught, but she has no right to give up. Still intercepting the attack, she directed it back towards the source, causing a powerful explosion that lit up the dark sky with bright lights. Further exhausted, she can barely stand on her feet, exhausted by a battle that has reached its limit. The monster, although lying, is not defeated. Its strength has not yet run out, and the battle is far from over and will not be so easy. The warden analyzed the situation and developed a machine designed to confront Emma. Now the battle became even more dangerous. The other creations of the Guardian rejoined the battle, changing their aim and heading towards the struggling Emma. She was surrounded on all sides with no way out of the situation, the tension only growing with every second. A huge number of enemies, which was almost impossible to resist, all their attacks were aimed only at her. Her soul burns with a bright fire of determination, like a flame igniting new hope and strength in her heart. Having thrown away all enemies, in her eyes she has one goal, to fight the boss, because all small enemies are small obstacles on the way to victory for her. Her hair, shrouded in flames, flutters in the air, and her spear is confidently aimed directly at the enemy, preparing for a powerful and decisive blow. A piercing stroke in the movement can no longer be stopped. Only a trace of flame remains, illuminating the path forward. Retreating, people scatter, rushing to safety. No one wants to be in the way of the raging, terrible spectacle. Suddenly, a spear fell like a meteor on the boss, causing a deafening explosion that reverberated for miles around. After a powerful attack, a new opponent enters the battle as if nothing had happened, causing surprise and uncertainty among the people. With unparalleled speed, he suddenly found himself behind Emma, causing her to flinch, stunned by this unexpected maneuver. She manages to react quickly by raising her weapon and blocking the blow at the last moment. Seeing Yulia, she is surprised to realize his presence. A misunderstanding flashes over her. For Emma, the battle is not over yet. The monster has no human characteristics and strives to end the battle that has begun. The robot examines the empty space in surprise. Only a gloomy pool of blood testifies to what happened. The monster, conducting a scan, finds traces indicating where the girl could have fled from the scene of the battle. With a molten brain, chaos and disorder begin around the boss. Meaningful actions are no longer within his power. The boss creates monsters at double speed, but he no longer manages to create new creations. Progress is stopped. Lonely Yule is upset. The destruction of the base took too long, and many people chose to hide. The rest continue to fight, but their strength is exhausted, and the battle becomes more and more difficult. Monsters rage at the second column like raging waves, but in the midst of destruction and chaos, the desperate defenders do not give up. Soldiers come to the rescue, imbued with a spirit of hope, ready to help the wounded and weak in their struggle. Bruce, with a cool look, clenching his fists, surrounded by a sinister aura, prepares for a life-and-death battle. He is the perfect commander who can turn the tide of the battle and bring it to an end. Emma is the perfect champion with incredible combat power and fortitude, the strongest weapon of mankind. Emma's consciousness slowly returned from the battle, and she was stunned to realize that she was alive, surrounded by destroyed robots and ashes. Emma was amazed when she noticed that her savior was the Goblin Jack. He was just standing nearby, watching those around him. The monster, despite its intimidating appearance, extended a helping hand to this girl, which caused her to experience an incredible shock. She was amazed because monsters had never shown such an ability to communicate before. Now that he had healed her wounds, the monster had expressed his intention to become her mentor. The situation was even more unclear than before. The robot has discovered its target and is heading towards it with an indomitable desire to destroy. The force of his blow resembles the fury of the elements, capable of wiping out everything that stands in its way, leaving only destruction and emptiness. Yulia's hand waved like a wave, holding back the crushing power of the attack, his aura expressing steadfastness and willpower. 
His face remained impenetrable as a rock as he activated the keychain, causing the monster machines to let their guard down. The retaliatory attack disoriented the killer, forcing him to carry out insane and aimless attacks, devoid of reason and strategy. The monster destroys the previously guarded pillar almost completely, leaving only rubble and ruins behind its recklessness. Yule, looking at the destroyed column, is pleased with the result, his eyes shining with anticipation, because the next step is already clearing in his thoughts. At this time, the goblin and the girl are engaged in a training battle. Sparks fly from the collision of weapons. She tries her best, but it turns out with difficulty. He is cold and strong, instructing her with his movements, and she tries to restrain his onslaught, trying to withstand the test. She realizes that it's time to resort to a fiery form, hoping that it will help her win the battle. During the fight, Jack dodges all attacks and gives advice, lecturing her to help her become stronger. He wants her to be aware of and in control of her power, rather than letting her control it. Her body is permeated with fire like a starry dome, and her mind is like a sharp blade cutting through the darkness. She is ready to become invincible. As if after an explosion of energy, a moment of silence envelops them. The words become soft surf against the background of a raging, terrible whirlwind of events. Doubts still babble in her mind, but there is a power boiling inside her, which grows with every breath, with every moment of struggle. The monster ponders, trying to understand what made the girl accept him as a teacher. His gaze goes into the distance, as if looking for answers in the heavens. Her gaze rests on the goblin, filled with determination and doubt, wanting to understand what he sees in her that she can't see. She is burning with a thirst for action, ready to focus only on her body, to immerse herself in battle without thinking about anything else. In his smile, you can see satisfaction. The student goes her own way, becoming a real master. Panic-stricken people have gathered in the subway. Three days have passed since the start of the mission, and they don't know what to do next. The atmosphere is still tense. Residents sitting in the subway feel a mixture of feelings. The desire to help is restrained by fear. Amidst tense anticipation and anxious thoughts, the robot burst in, tearing at the wall like an indomitable beast piercing the darkness. Unshakable and impassive, the robot continues its uncompromising search, devoid of even a shadow of human feelings. The robot scans every face for its target. Its algorithms know no mercy. It needs Emma's death. The monster loses control due to a glitch in the program and mistaking someone for a target, begins to attack everyone around indiscriminately. Emma, despite the danger, stands up for people and goes to help them, using all her strength and skills. The appearance of the girl causes mixed feelings among people, misunderstanding and hope for salvation. Transformed into an avenging angel, Emma joins the fray, becoming the indomitable protector of all who are in danger. Taking on the role of Jack's apprentice, she uncovered the hidden conditions of the mission, inheriting his skills and obtaining new equipment. On the rooftop in the daylight, Yule and the Swordmaster sit, discussing the course of the battle and its possible outcome. They realize that the metal enemy could become the girl's sworn opponent. The chances of victory seemed equal. But this girl is the heiress of a Swordmaster, and this gives her the strength and skill she needs to overcome this challenge. Her sword skills are improving with each passing moment, bringing her closer to victory. Three days after the start of the mission, the first column was wiped off the face of the earth, leaving only destroyed debris and a shadow of horror. The soldiers, full of determination and composure, move forward, overcoming their inner fears and doubts. The guard of the second column is destroyed, devastation reigns around, the enemy's forces are weakened, and this makes it possible to seize the initiative. The monster that was chasing Emma is defeated by her spear. This outcome symbolizes victory over fear and despair. People discuss the current situation, and there is a new hope in their ranks for victory, which inspires them to continue fighting. Battle-weary soldiers are boosted, perhaps thanks to reinforcements or morale that Emma has raised. Many people come to the rescue, led by Emma, which shows her role as a leader and a symbol of hope for everyone. The second column of the enemy is destroyed, and this event causes joy among people who see the results of their efforts. People rejoice and rejoice in their victory, feeling relief and satisfaction from the results achieved. They are convinced that they were able to succeed without Yulia's help, which adds to their confidence in their abilities and independence. For them, this becomes a new hope in this inhumane game because they can cope with all the difficulties themselves. 
As Yule turned the pages of his powerful book with a satisfied smile, he knew that the victory had been achieved thanks to his covert intervention. Jack seriously reminded Julie of the old promise made in the event of Emma's victory, stressing the importance of keeping it. Soldiers carefully inspected and organized their equipment, preparing for possible new challenges. In the camp, there was an active preparation for the care of the wounded. The soldiers discussed plans for their treatment and recovery. Emma suddenly interrupted Bruce, reminding him to move on as there was little time for pauses. In anticipation of the next meeting with her mentor, Emma could not help but dramatize the upcoming event, building up internal tension. No one could know for sure if it was even possible to defeat the third-level monster, Emma's mentor, who possessed incredible power. It was a mystery to everyone what was hidden in the depths of Yuli's thoughts and what plan he was forging in his mind. When the soldiers and Emma saw the unexpected sight in front of them, they were shocked by an unforeseen turn of events. Yule suddenly soared into the sky, leaving everyone in bewilderment from such a rapid and incomprehensible action. With a swing of his foot, Yule shattered the floating seal of the Demon King, showing his incomparable strength and determination. Suddenly, the purpose of the mission changed, causing even more bewilderment among all involved. The sky opened up, engulfing everything around with red light and a black hole, creating a terrifying landscape. Monsters burst out of this cosmic rift. The new goal of the mission was to kill the Demon King. Panic and horror broke out among the people, and everyone began to openly express contempt for Yulia. Neither Emma nor Bruce could understand what Yul was up to, adding tension to an already chaotic atmosphere. Swordmaster Jack himself could not believe what was happening. His surprise was boundless. However, amid the chaos, Jack found interest in the fight, grinning in anticipation of the upcoming battle. Immediately, he rushed in the direction of the crevasse, leaving only traces of his rapid passage in his wake. With unswerving determination, he began to destroy the monsters that burst out of the portal. Emma and Bruce, stunned, seemed glued to the ground, gripped by fear and terror. As Jack continued his massacre, he turned to Emma, urging her to do her best in the fight. Yule rushed into the very abyss of the portal, entering the demon realm. Above his head, the halo of a fallen angel sword, symbolizing his protection in this gloomy place. A huge monster lay in front of him, and Yule, thoughtfully thinking about his easy victory, approached the demon king. With open defiance, he began to question the powerful enemy, trying to understand his motives. When the demon king heard Krasin's name, his surprise only intensified. He had never heard such a name. Yule, whose guesses were waiting for confirmation, felt acutely disappointed because nothing had turned out as he had expected. Not receiving the desired answers, he resolutely turned around and left, realizing that his presence here was meaningless. Turning to say goodbye, he apologized for interrupting the meal and warned the Demon King of the imminent arrival of his true opponent. A quick blow rushed towards him, and he continued on his way, as if on an easy walk, ignoring the threat, whistling under his breath. The demon's adversary, Jack, is already approaching the place where Yule and the Demon King were gradually moving away from each other. Jack's approach caused him mixed feelings, both surprise and fright. Around the throne, the opponents who began the battle splattered the surroundings with blood, creating a picture of real carnage. The fight began instantly, and within a couple of seconds, the Demon King was left without one arm, adding to the chaos around him. Yule, feeling that such a course of events was contrary to the rules, remained perplexed. Standing in front of him, now without both hands, Julius could not hide his amazement. It was an obvious misunderstanding. The king, in a frenzy of humiliation, could not believe that such a wretched little man could have crippled him like that. Yule, reluctant to fight, offered Jack to take on the burden of the battle. The enemy had already taken aim, but he stood calmly, as if it did not concern him at all. Despite the ongoing struggle and powerful blows of the enemy, the hero did not stop thinking about the situation, trying to find a way out. After a powerful blow, the guy flew away at breakneck speed, continuing to think about his next moves. In deep thought, he realized that a hidden condition would soon be fulfilled, greatly increasing all mission rewards. A stunning blow overtook him, and the blast wave spread in all directions. He was driven into the ground, but remained unharmed, without shedding a drop of blood. Its armor had unique properties, such as enhanced defenses and the ability to self-heal. In this situation, he decided to hold back the attacks without taking active action in response. 
The demon furiously struck at Yulia, who remained indifferent to this violence, reflecting on the well-being of those around him. Meanwhile, the demon army was engaged in a fierce battle with the soldiers, and the people needed to evacuate them urgently. Although the monsters did not possess great strength, their numbers made it impossible to rebuff them decently. Yule turned into the enemy of the entire city after breaking the seal of the demon king. People helped, rushing to the aid of those who gave signals about the need for support. Emma burned every monster in her path, making it her goal to save every person. Everyone around accused Yuli of what was happening, and slander became commonplace. Emma disagreed, but she couldn't offer convincing arguments because everything really looked suspicious. A passerby pointed out to Emma that she was holding back and not responding to people, which caused additional bewilderment. Emma denies rumors about her relationship with Yule, and the confidence of a passerby does not waver. As a sign of unexpected gratitude, she throws a half-eaten pack of chips to the girl, causing general bewilderment. This pack of chips symbolizes gratitude for help and salvation, despite its unusualness. At the same time, Jack defends Julia in a battle with the Demon King, urging him to step back. The Swordmaster decides to join the fight on his own, leaving the guy with remorse. Yule is overcome with shame, thinking about what could have turned out differently. The friendship between Jack and an ordinary person reaches a peak, activating Crasson's hidden skill. The hero is surprised to watch the book, which is illuminated with a scarlet light, already knowing what is happening. Jack's battle is intense and difficult, and he is convinced that his opponent is the real Demon King. The Swordmaster prepares for the decisive move, tightly gripping the bloody sword. This technique may cost him his life, but he is ready for anything, full of determination. Yule, not wanting such a sacrifice for his friend, bursts into battle, striking the Demon King with a devastating blow. Jack, who has seen the battle before, is surprised by such devotion of a guy who does not agree to such an outcome. The Demon King was defeated thanks to Yule's powerful attack, who played a key role in the victory. All summoned monsters, including Jack, must be destroyed. Julie, pleased with his friend's rescue, has already conceived a new plan to protect his life. When they reach the pinnacle of friendship, they enter into a patron spirit contract. Emotions are raging inside the goblin. A minute ago, he was ready to say goodbye to life. Hated by all society, Yule is now an ally of the monsters, believing that he has lost his humanity. The mission is complete. But this guy is once again at the top of the points list, remaining an enemy of the people. Finally, you can exhale. The endless horror is over. It's time to rest and take a breath. Sitting on the roof of the building, the girl looks thoughtfully into the distance, wondering if this guy is a gift from God or a time bomb. Bruce begins to guess the secret rules of this game, trying to understand whether the existence of an absolute unit is possible. Yule has reached the maximum level. This is a real phenomenon. But could the game really allow him to exist? The system identified him as an anomalous unit with exceptional characteristics. He has become a target for destruction. Non-human beings comparable to gods intend to eliminate him, although his view remains unchanged. At the moment when the player's hand was lowered to the kill button, Yule felt a strange feeling, but nothing happened. He felt himself being watched, and when his fall was over, he had even more questions. The system failed to destroy a super strong but outwardly ordinary person, which became a subject for further study. For detailed analysis, it is classified as a hidden object so that no one can detect it. He found himself high in the sky, surrounded only by the expanse of space, the playing field, and the figure carrying the city. People spend their points while others announce the results of research on the dice used in missions. Bruce gets the spoonful of fate, which always remains pure and returns to the owner even if lost. Thinking about this subject, he thinks that a high class is not always useful in battle. People start forming teams by looking for members who can perform different tasks, whether it's attacking or defending. Emma feels that her place is not in the army and decides to go her own way, gathering all her belongings. She seeks to help those who are hiding from fear and need help, demonstrating true heroism. Yule, pleased with how things are going for people, sits on the roof and thinks about the future. The military and champions who have become a support for everyone have gained unprecedented power and support. Mistakes are unacceptable, otherwise the city will be destroyed by its own inhabitants. The guy's thoughts are interrupted by an unknown girl whose appearance surprises him. He wonders how she was able to rise so high and for what purpose. 
The girl peers at Yulia, remaining unaware of whether he has lived up to her expectations. Her words cut like a knife, but it seems to her that Yule is already used to loneliness. Yule does not show emotions and only wonders what this mysterious stranger wants. Her behavior becomes increasingly anxious. It seems that she knows everything about him and begins to dominate the conversation. She ends the conversation by taking a cable in her hands and calling Julia a fool, because he could bend the whole city to his will. Without further ado, the girl leaves Julia perplexed on the roof in a strange, tense environment. The city receives a level increase, partial restoration of infrastructure begins, and the game menu is enriched with new features. Yule learns from the handbook that the more people spend points, the higher the level of the city becomes. But the points he invested do not affect the city, only raising more questions, despite his significant spending. He begins to doubt the expediency of using the book, since he cannot directly improve the state of the city. The girl who caused confusion in his head already appears on the roof of another building, noting that the soldiers are doing well. She wonders where to go next to make herself comfortable. She remains a fragile resident of the city, where danger lurks around every corner. A new move unexpectedly begins in the game, which no one foresaw so soon. Above the glass roof of the city, the greedy god of gold appears, threatening destruction if his demands are not met. People are surprised that the mission will last two weeks, which seems to them an unusually long time, especially without the appearance of monsters. However, this mission does not provide for a collective reward, and the individual one depends on the satisfaction of the requirements of this god. Emma decides not to go into the details of the mission and, burning with the fire of determination, leaves. The area around the city expands and unusual locations are formed around it. Yule sees luck in this mission. If everything goes according to his plan, the development of the city will accelerate significantly. He plans to continue using the handbook, but after the mission, he wants to find a way to get rid of it. All his thoughts are cut short when a sword appears from the book, piercing through his heart. Yulia's eyes are full of horror. The whole world seems to have lost its colors and is trembling, falling apart. Due to the lack of sacrifices for personal gain in the previous mission, the Demon King applies a punishment that causes great pain. He needs to make a supremacy sacrifice, otherwise his health will drop to zero and the book will choose a new owner. In the dense jungle, the team discovered an unknown dungeon and claimed it as their territory. Some confidently perceived the find, others, worried about their health, decided to report this place. Believing that the reward for the information is not enough, they decide to go there to research and create a story on their own. A dark silhouette appears from the entrance to the dungeon, causing goosebumps, which they mistake for a monster. However, it turns out to be Yule, carrying a mountain of treasure on his shoulders, looking wounded and tired. Continuing to feel pain, he shares his knowledge of the weaknesses and traits of the dungeon boss with the group about to go inside. Yule does not stop describing in detail every corner of this place, including secret rooms. During lunch, the group discusses how they became victims of personal gain on the first day of the mission. Together with a large number of people, they find themselves in an isolation camp designed for the same victims. They begin to discuss how exactly Yule was able to catch them off guard during the mission. Many consider him to be the true devil who has revealed his true essence. Yulia's gaze, filled with horror and pain, inspires fear in everyone around him. He needs new victims. He does not have to do these things out of caprice, and as a certain number of victims is reached, the punishment begins to weaken. The book does not reveal any information about itself, which is expected, but it gives Yulia time to rest. The Demon King believes that Yule is working for him, unaware of his hidden agenda. Sitting on her mountain of gold like a dragon, Yule plunges into thought again, this time with a new self-confidence. The approach of the powerful paws of the level 3 griffin does not bother him, and a smirk appears on his face. Meanwhile, Emma engages in battle with the stone golem, an elite monster. She copes with ease by remembering the lessons of her mentor, Master Jack, and allowing the power to flow freely within. Thanks to her training with the master, Emma has become a real strong warrior. After the battle, Emma allows herself to relax a little, but her attention is drawn to a girl digging through treasure nearby. It was Wendy, known for her ability to sow fear and irritation, dissatisfied with the formalities in communication. She continues her work. Wendy intended to enrich herself at the expense of other people's finds, bypassing her own efforts to find them. Wendy's ambiguous manner of communication left Emma at a loss, making it difficult for her to respond to Wendy's actions and attitudes towards things. Fragile-looking, Wendy claimed to be a weak villager, 
but a sly smile played on her face. This only added to Emma's confusion. She felt lost, not knowing what to do. A tired Emma is distracted by an incoming message on her phone, passing on information about the treasure to others. Emma notices that Wendy's bag is too small to carry so much, considering that Wendy has been following her the whole time. Wendy prefers quality over quantity, choosing items that her intuition marks as valuable. She explains her choice to Emma, claiming that her eyes are able to discern the best. Continuing on her way, Wendy expresses surprise that a great warrior like Emma doesn't know much about the current mission. Wendy reveals that the enemies on this mission are not monsters, but other people, which confuses Emma. A fierce individual struggle for treasure breaks out between the villagers, as there is no overall reward for the mission. Greed begins to take over, as it is easier to attack other people than monsters, and everyone strives for the maximum reward. Attacks and thefts of treasures have become more frequent in the city, which no longer surprises detectives. Exhausted by such events, the townspeople are thinking about more rational methods that no one uses. The system is too slow to assess the quality of treasures, causing controversy among colleagues about the need for such a lengthy check. The discussion of the detectives excited the police officers present in the room, straining the situation. The situation is escalated by Yule, who arrived riding a griffin, attracting everyone's attention. The debate is interrupted by one of the detectives, who captures Yulia's face, preparing to hit with a legendary glove. The second detective reacts calmly to the situation and orders the staff to sound the alarm due to the arrival of a known enemy. He is proud of his colleague who bravely confronts Yulia, although he is inferior to him in level and equipment. As a result of the skirmish, both are already on the asphalt, which is completely destroyed around them. Yule is not surprised by the development of events and raises his hands in surrender. The whole city instantly learns about the arrest of the most dangerous player and the news quickly spreads among the residents. The arrest only spurs the enthusiasm of people, who now go in search of treasure without fear, trying to earn as much as possible. A bloody battle breaks out in the Goblin Village, the purpose of which is to completely clear this location. The cleanup is successful, and each participant is confident in their abilities and skills. The weak goblins have no choice but to flee in terror, trying to save their lives. But even confident monsters cannot hide from merciless soldiers. In their ranks, there is a sniper in camouflage clothing who is able to hide his presence and accurately hit targets. The operation to clear the territories is coming to an end, and the progress of actions is reported coldly and clearly. At this time, the goblin shaman, overwhelmed with schadenfreude, oppresses people and summons his god of death. He is sure that with the appearance of his god, no one will be able to escape death but his confidence is suddenly lost when soldiers appear in front of him, aiming an explosive ring at him. The weapons are ready for use, and the soldiers, cold by nature, prepare to interrupt the goblin's spell. The purple flames of the explosion envelop the field of vision of everyone present, covering the surrounding area. An attack at the time of conscription was considered cheating, but the soldiers, eager to perform their duties, did as they saw fit. After the explosion, there was no trace of the goblin, leaving behind only a huge crater. The main task of the soldiers was to find the missing citizens, who were found in serious and wounded condition. In the military headquarters, after the successful completion of the rescue operation, discussions began on the next steps. The captured goblin village is planned to be turned into a forward post of the armed forces. The discussion of Julius showed that what worries them most is not his book, but his ability to use information with surgical precision. The Griffin Julia bored on the roof decides to take a nap in the sunshine, despite the fact that his presence frightens passers-by. The arrested Yule did not end up in a prison cell, but sat comfortably at the dinner table. The detectives are amazed by his appetite, but Yule continues to enjoy his soup. The guy is recognized as a criminal, a fraud, and a murderer, but satisfied with the food, he agrees with these accusations without objection. An experienced detective claims that after 20 years of work, one glance is enough for him to recognize a criminal. Yule is surprised when he is not called a bad guy, and everything that happened is considered an accident. He continues to eat, listening to how his actions, despite his intentions to help, have caused harm. The detective is glad that the enemy of the people has surrendered, and plans to change people's erroneous opinion about Yulia. After finishing the meal, the guy gloomily and coldly declares that he did not come here for help. This statement by Julia abruptly interrupts the detective's joy, 
plunging him into bewilderment about Yulia's true motives. The conversation is unexpectedly interrupted by an officer who runs into the room and shouts about urgent news. A new theft incident is reported. This time, the perpetrator used heroic class equipment, forcing the detective to leave the premises immediately. In a mission without a shared reward, chaos becomes the norm, excluding any cooperation. Such thoughts overwhelm the second detective, exposing him as a person who refuses to accept common sense. Rational thinking is preserved only where people remain true to themselves and think about the good of others. Regardless of the world, the main task remains to arrest those who put rewards above the lives of others. Dave cold-bloodedly and without regret fights for the equality of all, suppressing any attempts to violate morality. Nolan, devoid of conscience, is ready to disregard earthly laws in order to become the king of this world. The only one who can restrain this careless man is Dave, who puts moral values first. However, Yulia's actions remain the main mystery. No one can accurately understand his plans and train of thought. An enemy of the people who remain behind bars, Yule sits quietly, already aware of the upcoming events that are part of his plan. Yuli, calmly sitting in the same place, calmly gains the necessary patience. He activates a mysterious object, and the air around him begins to shudder from an invisible force. Suddenly, his doppelganger appears in front of him, an exact copy standing in front of the original. Yule hopes that the double will prove to be a worthy substitute while he is away. Wearing the legendary cape, he becomes invisible to others, completely hiding his presence. The doppelganger, devoid of emotion, only sighs heavily, looking away. Suddenly, their heavy atmosphere is interrupted by a policeman who bursts into the room and tries to take Yulia out. The resolute tone of the policeman is replaced by doubts and fear of becoming another victim. Outside the room, many employees are waiting, hoping for Yulia's calm behavior. An emotionless double calmly leaves the room, instilling fear in others. He has to be sent to a specially prepared isolation ward, where he plans to rest. The griffin, who had been resting earlier, suddenly rises into the air, surprising everyone present. Yule is riding a griffin, continues to study the situation, not showing his emotions. Residents are actively starting to act, successfully implementing the first stage of Yulia's brilliant plan. During the four days of the mission, the society was divided into adventurers looking for treasure and guards guarding the city. The captured village was equipped in record time, reaching unprecedented scales. Bruce, enjoying coffee, thinks that strong people could easily complete the mission by working together. However, the situation in the city remained tense due to the increasing number of criminals hunting for treasure. The police are doing their best, but they lack the resources and personnel to work effectively. The army cannot help the police, as this will not lead to a decent result. The army cannot act until it receives a formal request for assistance from the police. The military has no right to protect public order, because the world is changing, unlike the foundations and ideas of people. The city is immersed in the darkness of the night, creating a gloomy, intense atmosphere. An unknown dark personality terrorizes the inhabitants, using various poisons in his atrocities. Poisons are made with the help of a mythical orb held in the hands of the villain, and they increase their effect over time. This personality does not seem to be human, as he leaves victims in agony to test various poisons. He is not interested in treasures. He is satisfied only with the possibility of inflicting pain and suffering on the innocent. Law enforcement officers Dave and Nolan arrive at the scene of a recent crime. The criminal did not touch the treasure, leaving the poisoned man to die on the cold ground. They do not yet know that this atrocity was committed by only one person. They find a mountain of poisoned people stacked on top of each other, realizing the complete danger of the situation. After Yulia's disappearance, many psychopaths came to the surface, thirsting for chaos. For Dave, Yule is still a kind of good guy, but he can't deny that it all started with him. Dave hopes to get answers to his questions from Emma and Bruce, who are close friends of Julia. This guy realizes that the greedy god is only a few percent satisfied out of a hundred and knows that he will have to act alone. Yule travels to a desert area shrouded in thunder and tornadoes, feeling the excitement of approaching her target. The griffin, exhausted by the long flight, barely stays in the air, and Yule is surprised to find that they have already arrived. He praises his griffin for his stamina and asks him to rest while he goes about his business. Despite the best efforts of the inhabitants, the most valuable treasures are already in the hands of their nemesis. Unbeknownst to everyone, Yule grows his own god of gold, planning to change the balance of power in the city. 
Bruce prepares to go to town to report on Eula, and his subordinates tearfully ask him to trust them. The tears of the soldiers are quickly replaced by exclamations and requests to bring ice cream or other delicacies from the city. As soon as the captain disappears from sight, the soldiers begin to cheer in joy, planning to throw a party. The most serious soldier continues to worry about his captain's burden, while the others are already having fun. However, he cannot leave his comrades unattended, fearing that they may harm their own base. While Yule endures countless blows, the situation around him becomes more and more tense. Unable to withstand the pain, Julie falls to the ground, and Jack calmly watches what is happening. To reduce the pain of the torment caused by the punishment of the Demon King, the goblin presses on the pain points of the suffering guy. Thanks to the goblin for his help, Yule notes that the result achieved is enough for him so far. Both friends stand motionless in the middle of the wasteland, determined not to give up halfway. While Bruce is in town, it's the perfect time to loot the empty jungle houses. Suddenly his trip is interrupted, and the cold-blooded soldier is already preparing his weapons for battle. He realizes that their car has been ambushed, and now they need to actively fight back in order to survive. The attackers tirelessly use their mana and restore it with potions, attacking a war truck. The soldier is angry at the recklessness of the attackers who decided to attack the military. He understands that retaliation can cause panic and chaos, so he needs to find a wiser solution. It was decided to avoid the battle by abruptly changing the route and waiting for reinforcements. The crime rate in the city exceeds all permissible limits and is not comparable to expectations. Strong people left the city leaving it to fend for itself with police and civilians, which gave the villains freedom of action. If the most powerful villains appeared in the city now, there would be nothing left of it. An ominous dark aura moving at incredible speed haunts their car. Meanwhile, Yule fights against the third-level enemies, who are outnumbered. He engages in a fierce battle with fierce lizards, who seek to take his life. Yule, full of determination and anger, prepares for a devastating blow. His attack leaves a trail of blood and destruction in its wake, generating a powerful blast wave. After the therapy conducted by Jack, the guy feels significant relief in his body, as if it has become much lighter. The underground city of Lizardmen evokes the same feelings of oppression and darkness as the Demon Realm. The goal of their mission is to collect as many rewards as possible, and satisfying the greedy god is not a priority for them. The chaos and terror that grips Bruce and Emma in the city are also part of Yule's cunning plan. In order to temporarily hide, Bruce uses the instant hiding device he received when he was promoted. The guy who landed on the car causes fear in the soldiers inside. The soldier puts forward his own conditions, including the demand to talk to the leader of the criminals. However, the perpetrator refuses to obey any orders, claiming that he himself is the leader of this madness. He forces Bruce to follow his instructions, threatening that disobedience could cost the latter his life. The criminal surrounds the car with a dark poisonous cloud, which increases panic among the military. Bruce and his frightened to death ward remain in the car, not knowing what to do next. His mind is confused about the nature of this fog and its actual effects on people. He has absolute confidence in the deadly power of these weapons and worries about their potential to spiral out of control. The soldier is willing to compromise if his sinister opponent also agrees to make a concession. Bruce, confident in his actions, suggests that the psychopath voluntarily surrender and become a subordinate. The dark-masked figure has difficulty accepting the soldier's offer, distorting his face, possibly from disgust or other emotions. Without listening to the end, the distorted expression of the criminal's face is replaced by contentment and anger. Bruce's plan turned out to be more cunning, his speech was only a way to buy time, which the criminal realized too late. At a critical moment, reinforcements arrive at the scene in the person of Dave, who immediately delivers a powerful blow to the villain. Dave's powerful attack caused a furious wind whirlwind that lifted the foe high into the sky. In the air, the criminal wondered if he had played too much, having made a mistake in his calculations. The rising vortex made it impossible to control the poisonous smoke he was using. Despair was replaced by a determination not to give up without a fight. He prepares a slingshot for a retaliatory strike. Having survived the disappointment, he now feels joy in anticipation of the battle between good and evil, aiming at the machine. The slingshot was incredibly accurate, rushing towards the target at a staggering speed and leaving only a trail in its wake. Bruce and Dave, standing on the ground, are surprised to see that the guy's weapon is a simple slingshot 
but with extraordinary strength. Surprise is quickly replaced by a soldier's instant reaction to an approaching threat. The criminal's poison burns through the asphalt, creating huge holes. It's scary to think what would happen to a person. Dave, full of heroism, decides to stay where he is and continue his pursuit of a dangerous criminal. It would be strategically wise for Bruce to run away, but the detective, stubborn in his convictions, refuses to understand this. While they were arguing, the criminal had already disappeared from sight. Fighting continues in many areas of the city. Chaos engulfs the city. Some of the attackers are in a panic, their plans have failed, and they sit empty on the ground. Emma has returned to defend the city and now takes on all those who stand against the people. For the attackers, the only rational solution is to flee, since such an enemy is clearly too strong for them. Emma was unhappy that the guys who had just rushed into battle did not want to talk. One of them, without turning around, threw the bottle after him and continued to run on. The bottle was flying towards the ground, only a few meters away from Emma, which surprised her. The man standing behind Emma realized that there was poison in the bottle, and it was important to prevent it from breaking. Emma deftly caught the bottle at the tip of her spear, moments before falling, preventing it from breaking. With a straight face, she threw the bottle high into the air with a deft movement of her hand, following it with her eyes. Catching the bottle, the man breathed a sigh of relief, realizing that they were now safe. The elderly man expresses his gratitude to Emma for trying to figure out who all these people are who are causing chaos. Many people stand amidst the destruction of the city, and no one knows where these criminals came from. The discussions concern how many innocents have suffered due to the actions of intruders, while there is no antidote to poison. Thanks to Emma's timely appearance, people did not lose all their treasures. Lost in thought, Emma realized the truth of Wendy's words, that it is easier for humans to attack their fellow human beings than monsters. Focused and determined on, she turns to the man with a request to temporarily stop the search for treasure. Wendy, remaining in the shadows, watches Yule in the prison cell, realizing that he is just a double. Her interest in Julia's plans intensifies, and she tries to guess his motives and next steps. Wendy realizes that her presence in the city is meaningless without Julia, and thinks about her further actions. She knows that a great battle is about to begin, which Yule has already learned about thanks to the book. Goblin Jack wonders if the current turmoil in town is part of Julia's cunning plan. Yule did not expect the appearance of a mysterious shadow figure and understands that he will not be able to deal with him. He seeks to create more chaos in the city, though his full intentions remain unclear. Goblin Jack, looking at the ground, cannot decipher his friend's thoughts. But Yule is confident in his actions and promises that everything will soon become clear. They decide that now is the time to clear the dungeon and it's time to distract themselves from anxious thoughts. A huge door swings open in front of the duo, reaching an impressive height. The monster in the depths of the dungeon, cold and insensitive, is surprised that someone was able to reach it. The demon greets those who enter his chambers, rejoicing in the opportunity to observe their suffering after a long time of loneliness. Yulia is not interested in the demon's speeches. He immediately asks him about Crassine, showing his dissatisfaction. The boy's rude tone irritates the demon who tries to scare those who enter with a loud roar. Yule, without waiting for the demon's attack, decides to act first, rushing into the attack with full determination. His strike, lightning fast and accurate, is aimed directly at the demon, but a protective circle flashes between them, stopping his attack. The Demon King, having reached the limit of his patience, feels infuriated by Julia's behavior. The magical barrier pushed Julius a considerable distance, forcing him to rethink his strategy. The barrier completely neutralizes any physical attacks and instantly blocks magic spells. This Demon King is of the magic type, which is in stark contrast to its martial type predecessor. Jules thinks that if Bruce and his team were here, they would be destroyed within seconds. However, Yule and Jack are not ordinary soldiers who rely only on physical strength. They have ways to resist such an enemy. The battlefield is lit up with peals of flames, and the atmosphere is much more tense than it was before. Yule prepares to strike again using his legendary axe, the power of which is incomparable. The mana reserve of the Demon King is impressive. Sitting still, he is able to create hundreds of magic circles at once. Julie, who has maximum stats, transforms his axe attack into a magic strike. A scarlet explosion fills the entire space of the room, leaving behind only a blinding light. Dave, a detective from the homicide department, 
is filled with seriousness, realizing that a dark personality in the city has the power to cause the apocalypse. It gathers the most trusted people in a closed room to discuss the next steps. Nolan names the new villain Imugi, holding a bottle of poison in his hands, and declares that the police alone are not enough to apprehend him. They came together to propose to the army a joint operation to stop the unrest. Emma does not hesitate to agree to participate in the operation, showing determination and readiness for action. Bruce goes deep into his thoughts, pondering the hopelessness of the current situation. For a long time, dozens of people couldn't even injure the Demon King. It was impossible for him to imagine that there would be a mortal capable of delivering a decisive blow by force alone. Undaunted, Yule continues to ask about the Demon King Krasin with a smirk. The demon is surprised, not believing that at such a critical moment in the battle, Julia is interested in this particular question. However, Yule receives details about this horrific game directly from the Demon King. King talks about missions designed for monsters, including the destruction of mortals. Yule is amazed by the information he has received, wondering if he is really allowed to hear it. For the king, the disclosure of information does not matter, because the more the owner of the handbook knows, the faster he will hasten death. Julia's irony only causes laughter from the demon, who considers him pitiful, but feels the desire to see his death. The king begins to disappear from this world, deciding to have a sincere laugh at the end. Jack tries to keep Julia, in whom all human emotions and feelings are seething. The demon is pleased with his participation in this mission, as he was able to see the man with the book in complete disarray. Yulia's confusion only intensifies with every second. He feels thirsty for answers to his numerous questions. A tree growing directly above the underground city begins to shake along with the surrounding area, causing alarm. The blast waves soared high into the sky from the dungeon, where the events with the participation of the heroes took place. Yule and Jack managed to take cover and remained unharmed but the Demon King warned that their victory would be short-lived. Jack put his hand on Julia's shoulder and asked if he was okay. Both were hiding their emotions. The young man pondered the words of the Demon King as he pondered the high price of owning the book. In this mission, it will not be possible to collect more information since the last king on this battlefield has already fallen. Their new priority is to reconfigure the level of complexity of the environment, but it is unknown whether all participants will be able to survive. Three days later, people organized security zones and almost completely took control of the situation. Medical workers could barely cope with the large number of poisoned people as the supply of potions and antidotes ran out. There were more victims due to the greed and cruelty of people than from the attacks of monsters during the mission. The strongest among the humans, Emma and Dave, continued to maintain order and fought Imugi. Despite the difficult trials in the battle, the heroes did not give up. All were wounded, but ready to fight to the end. The self-confident criminal did not even make an effort. Enjoying the chaos around him, it seemed that he was out of reach. Despite all the carnage, people continued to search for treasures, trying to make the most of the situation. Imugi is sure that the city needs a leader, and only the strongest person he thinks himself is suitable for this role. The criminal speech is interrupted by Emma, expressing her disagreement and claiming that the strongest man in the city is Yule. Imugi believes that Yule doubts his victory in this fight, as he has not yet arrived on the battlefield. As he speaks, a hail of bullets occurs, but thanks to the fog creating an invisible protective layer around him, he remains unharmed. The poisonous mist effectively blocks all attack attempts, providing Imugi with reliable protection. With each passing second of the battle, Imugi becomes more brutal and learns new skills. The development of his abilities is so rapid that he must be stopped as soon as possible, while it is still possible. Comparing himself to Yule, Imugi is convinced that he is more suitable for the role of leader because he is able to share points with others. His ambition is to subdue every resident of the city, forcing everyone to listen to him unquestioningly. Imugi's crushing aura increases the pressure in the area, his words reverberating through the air, escalating the situation. The heaviness of the atmosphere does not bother Dave, who believes that if this psychopath is just shaking the air, then he should do something useful. Dave unleashes a devastating wind strike that scatters people around, but he remains motionless. Dave's punch misses the mark, as the criminal is already preparing for a counterattack, fully prepared for battle. The heroes are stunned and frightened, not knowing how to proceed, overwhelmed by surprise and shock. Venomous snakes have surrounded them, leaving them with no escape, and fear fills their hearts ever deeper. 
The snakes formed a massive dome around the duo, completely cutting them off from the outside world. Emma, erupting with anger, went into a heightened state and created a protective barrier around herself and Dave. The criminal slowly but surely continued to move towards his goal, declaring that neither wind nor fire could stop them. There is no human smile on his face, but only chaos and disorder. The fiery protection cannot withstand the onslaught of snakes and crumbles to dust. Dave heroically covers Emma with his jacket, not thinking about his own safety. Emma still tries to object, reminding her that she is higher in level than the officer. Dave, already possessed by the poison that enters his body, says that this is the right thing to do. He must protect her in any situation. The atmosphere rages around, changing its tones, and the silhouette of their unexpected savior appears in front of the heroes. The villain is seized by panic and expresses disappointment due to the unexpected development of events. The savior turns out to be Jack, who is disappointed in his students for their inability to cope with the enemy. With his mouth agape, the man is surprised that the monster came to the rescue, and Emma, more confused, recognizes him as her master. Amugi, recognizing the goblin as the pillar guard from the previous mission, is puzzled as to why this monster is still here. Jack expresses dissatisfaction with the lack of discipline among the students, but realizes that this is not the time for lessons. A new god of gold appears in the city, reaching maturity, and all the inhabitants find out about it through an urgent notice. The new conditions of the mission involve rivalry between the gods, giving people a choice to which of them to give the treasure. This causes panic and discontent among those who have already given the treasures to the previous god, as now they may be left with nothing. Information about the value of treasures became available to everyone, and everyone realized that their enemy of the people was behind it. The criminal, overcome with anger, sees Yule approaching on a griffin, which further destroys his psyche. Our hero does not intend to leave the city in the hands of a man who can only count on legendary equipment. An uncontrollable shiver runs through the criminal's body. His plans were ruined by one person. Succumbing to emotions, he decides to launch a rash attack on his new opponent. People on Earth are frightened by the out-of-control force directed at Yulia. They begin to worry about him. Imugi loses control of his actions, being used as a mere tool. His only desire is to kill. Despite the quick attack, Yul does not even look away, although the griffin is wounded by the blow. However, the faithful monster was able to absorb the projectile aimed at them, protecting itself and its master. A griffin, calmly swallowing the deadly poison, surprises the attacking enemy. The monster indifferently consumes the poison bomb intended for Yulia as if it were an ordinary snack. Its standard diet includes basilis and hydras, so the monster has developed immunity to poisons. The elite enemy, who is not the boss, surprises the criminal who tried to take over the city even more. Yule, who suddenly appears behind the criminal, further disorients Imuji, who is still surprised by the ineffectiveness of the poison. Yule suggests that Imugi solve this plan as a homework leaving it unsolved. What was happening unsettled Emma and Dave, and they were almost speechless. Yule and his team are happy with their successful plan in this victory. Taking advantage of the moment, the guy announces that he now monopolizes all the rewards of the god of the desert of gold. This trio inspires such intense fear that it makes you shiver to the bone. After completing their performance, the team laughs, flying over the horizon. Yulia's friends realize that this is just a game, but his real plan remains a mystery. Confessing, Yule says that he is a terrible actor because in fact he acts for the good of the city. The inhabitants of the city have only one week to surpass the amount of treasure found by their enemy. A mass announcement calls everyone to action and join forces to achieve a common goal. The only way to survive this mission and get rewards is for everyone involved to work together. The decision to act together, although it seems trivial, can be the most effective way to return to your world. By combining their efforts, full of determination and strength, they will be able to overcome all obstacles together, supporting each other. Amugi is torn apart in his prison cell in a rage. All his dreams and achievements shattered in an instant. With a change in mission strategy, residents begin to receive special guidance to improve their actions. Nest attacks don't bring many rewards, but they make it easy to gauge the effort and difficulty required. Sometimes you can find valuable items in these places, which becomes a kind of jackpot after winning. Dungeons differ from nests in that their complexity cannot be assessed from the outside, and it is not known what is hidden inside. Due to the high danger, entering the dungeons is forbidden for loners, requiring joint efforts. 
To successfully complete the dungeons, the military needs to cooperate with adventurers. Even simple transportation remains dangerous. There is always a risk of attack. Collecting treasures together takes on new meanings. Each participant plays an important role in the mission. After delivery, the loot is stored under strict security in the evaluation center. Despite this approach, the goal set by Yule seems unattainable for the entire city. The last chance is to explore an area where no man has yet set foot due to the high danger. Dave and Nolan carefully examine the remains of Julie's doppelganger, realizing that they have been deceived. Yuli's plan begins to become clear. If it were not for his participation, the residents would not have been able to move. It was the catalyst that caused a strong outrage that exceeded the level of fear among the population. Despite the fact that this method works for the city, Dave finds it unacceptable. The more Yule arouses distrust among the residents, the more isolated he finds himself from everyone. An image of Julia begins to form in Nolan's head, and he wonders what this person really is. Yule does not just play a card, he calculates the entire game, having a lot of trumps in reserve. There is an interest in what move Yule has prepared in case the humans win this mission. Meanwhile, one girl stands at a huge monument in the jungle, carefully studying something on its surface. Wendy is clearly interested in the information written on this monument about the treasure hunting mission. She learns about a method of passage that she believes can bring her great wealth by selling this information. A tornado in the desert appeared as if out of nowhere. Flashes from the battle can be seen in the air. It's the last day of a treasure hunt mission, and Dave is trying his best to hurt Julia. Even direct blows do not seem scary to the guy. His face expresses only calmness without a shadow of fear. Suddenly, the guy flies into the air, surprised to realize the unexpected turn of events. Dave notes that the physical mass of the enemy plays a bigger role than the banal difference in levels. On one side, Emma rushes towards Yulia, full of determination and in an intensified state. On the other hand, he is surrounded by poisonous snakes, which almost caught up with the hero, but did not arouse emotions in him. It is not known what exactly provoked this battle, but it clearly has serious reasons. Less than half an hour remains before the end of the mission, and the inhabitants of the city have almost caught up with Julia in terms of the value of the treasures presented to God. Yule calls on the members of the City Alliance to work harder so that they are sure to surpass him in terms of the amount of rewards collected. Four days after the culprit is caught, Emma stands in amazement to learn that Emuji is not an adult male psychopath. It turns out that he is just a high school student who still lacks life experience. His manners are far from polite, he communicates very rudely with the legendary warrior. Unaware of the situation, he hopes to use his powers, but before he can blink, something rushes past him. The spear ends up next to the boy. Looking seriously through the tip of her spear, Emma demonstrates her superior speed. The conversation shifts to the topic of the boy's leadership and that all his former subordinates easily loosen their tongues. For him, their behavior is banal survival. The weak always follow the strong, and as soon as he is released, everyone will follow him. It's just human nature, he believes, filling his gaze with piercing darkness. But Emma does not care about all this. She sees only a small boy in front of her who thinks he is the greatest of all. He has a mythical class pearl, but Yule effortlessly defeated Imugi. A picture appears in the boy's thoughts. As soon as he upgrades his weapon, even Yule will not be able to resist his power. Emma thinks, realizing that if not for Yule, the consequences could be catastrophic. But if his weapons are still under development, there's no telling how terrifying his power can become. The city was noticeably transformed after the unification of residents. People picturesquely discussed the raids, sharing stories and experiences. The phone call turned out to be a salvation for Emma, who had been shrouded in a terrible atmosphere and now was beaming with happiness. Wendy was initially looking for a buyer for her information, but an enthusiastic Emma acted decisively. It was introduced to the most important people in the city, the military and police officers who stand guard over the order. Bruce, as always, is serious and careful, so before starting a conversation, he clarifies some details. He is worried that Emma has brought Imugi with her, a criminal who almost killed the soldiers with him. Bringing such a dangerous man was the idea of the commander-in-chief, who was not in the best condition for talking. Leaving Enma as a guard means losing a lot of combat power, so it is decided to try to lure Imugi to your side. Dave, who was about to object, quickly stopped, fulfilling the request of his boss sitting next to him. The information from Wendy is doubtful, but if it turns out to be reliable, 
it will make the task much easier. It is extremely difficult to defeat the god under protection, Yulia, but the team decides to try. It is for this battle that Imugi is required to increase the chances of success against a powerful opponent. The boy feels a surge of confidence, realizing that, after all, his presence was needed by the city. Thus, it was decided to organize a confrontation between Yulia's closest friends and himself. In the middle of the storm, Jack expresses an opinion about the need to increase the sacrifices of personal gain. But Yule had already stripped too many of his rewards and his conscience would not allow him to continue doing so despite being punished by the Demon King. Telling Jack about the sacrifices of personal gain, Julie remembers everyone who suffered because of him. The dialogue between the partners is unexpectedly interrupted by the appearance of silhouettes on the horizon. In the machine striving for the target sat the only people who were aware of the suffering of the universal enemy, but still prepared for battle. They are followed by another car with ordinary soldiers, who have also been ordered to prepare. For the first time in a long time, Julia was able to surprise with their actions, causing bewilderment in Jack. Even before entering the battle, Yule manages to provoke it by sending her griffin to attack first. Poisonous shackles interfere with the battle, pushing Emma and Dave away, causing them to be perplexed. Imugi decides to defeat his opponents on his own, believing that the others are only hindering him. The heroes, outraged by his amateur activity, strengthen their bodies with the properties of weapons and prepare for an attack. A flurry of attacks falls on the griffin, and he has no chance to dodge blows. The nearest soldiers begin supporting fire to cover the main force. Moving away from the battle, Amugi sneers with disgust, not considering the griffin to be an important opponent. As soon as he enters the battle, he immediately betrays people, expressing a desire to receive all the rewards for himself. Barry watches the battle from afar, carefully analyzing the situation. The original plan to negotiate was not even given a chance to be implemented. Most of the forces gather at the cars and prepare to leave. Killing the second god of gold could have led to victory, but this plan turned out to be illusory, and such a feat proved impossible for them. The real goal of the plan was to discover treasure in a previously unexplored sector of the desert. In a short time, it is necessary to land as many people as possible to collect the treasures that they can carry. Even Amugi was part of this fictitious plan, as he could not be left unattended in a weakened city. The last sector in this mission was an ordinary earthly city, which surprised the arrivals with its appearance. The ruined city exudes an evil aura, escalating suffering from all sides. Barry confirmed his hunches about the other people summoned to the game in the most horrific way. Countless senseless victims in the city, they were all ordinary people. The found treasures no longer bring joy, only leave a deep pain in the soul. At least a year ago, everyone in this city was destroyed, leaving only gloomy silence behind. The new theory struck Barry. Did the fragments of the world summoned on the same day spend their time differently? For some, time passed as a week, for others as a month, or even a year. It turns out that players can manipulate time. The Griffin proved to be incredibly resilient, withstanding the incessant attacks that rained down on it. Dave continued to be incredibly resilient and focused, throwing punch after punch and creating combinations. Unexpectedly for the monster, Emma's spear loomed over his head, determined to strike. Despite her reluctance to kill, Emma cannot do otherwise. They came here to win. Peals of flames engulfed the sky, completely engulfing the monster and the surrounding area in their flames. Jack and Yule watched from the sidelines without much emotion, silently looking at the scene. They reflected on how the spear and gloves that Emma and Dave fought with were the best even among legendary weapons. With their strength of mind and body, they were able to master such superhuman power while still at the first level. The main problem is that most attacks have a kill zone, leaving behind destruction. To succeed in this game, you need to work together and support each other. The presented griffin lies quietly on the ground, almost exhausted and on the verge of death. A newly risen monster causes Emma and Dave to doubt their victory. Yule holding the griffin in one hand congratulates the people on the successful completion of the first stage of his plan. Dave interrupting shouts that he didn't come for the gold, remaining serious as always. Yuli has feelings that he has not experienced before, the feeling that they came for him to save and not to fight. Dave's desire to avoid Julia's complete isolation from the city forces the latter to change his tone to a darker one. Calmly kneeling, Yule asks to be arrested, changing the atmosphere among those present. 
Jumping out abruptly, the guy disappears from sight, raising a huge cloud of dust behind him. Visibility deteriorated dramatically, and people were disoriented in this situation, not understanding what to do. But Emma's superhuman instincts work flawlessly. She senses danger without even seeing its source. Flashing rapidly and again, she rushes to the defense of her comrade, who does not have time to notice anything. An incredibly quick blow is dissipated by Emma's spear, who manages to protect those around her. This crushing blow was delivered by Jack, surprised that only one person was able to react to his attack. Julius, pleased with his griffin, leaves him to rest and recover from a hard battle. He is confident that his ally will soon recover, but he feels heavy at heart because of the need to use him in this way. The only thing he can do now is protect the griffin's nest until the end of the mission. The speed of Yulia's movement continues to amaze. He is so fast that only a trace remains behind him. Along the way, he reflects on Dave's words about salvation, losing more and more emotion on his face. He had anticipated a visit from a detective, but the words he heard sank deep into his soul. It is not difficult to predict events and actions, especially with a reference book, but human feelings remain unsolved. Jack managed to deal with all the soldiers in the desert, leaving Emma and Dave in fear to stand in front of him. The strength of the Swordmaster is so frightening that all confidence in victory melts before your eyes, becoming a pipe dream. With the last of her strength, Emma begs her teacher to let them pass, trying to influence his feelings. But Jack's determination and principles remain unwavering. If you want to convince a fighter, get better in battle. A wounded Bruce decides to leave, surprising Emma with what can still stand. They still have a few days left and the enemy is not in the mood to kill indiscriminately. The seriousness of the situation can be read on the soldier's face. The unexpected retreat of people occurs earlier than expected. Yule, who has just arrived at the place, Jack is amazed by what happened. Bruce thinks not like an ordinary soldier who follows orders, but like a real general who is able to think rationally. A raid is not a place for solitary courage. People need to gain experience. And for this, they need strategy and cooperation with each other. During the mission, participants need to accumulate special raid experience points that will be useful in the future. The points obtained should be distributed among different groups in order to avoid the concentration of power in the hands of one person or group. Jack is interested in Amuga's fate, but Julia is about to keep an eye on this unscrupulous guy. The young man's youth makes it difficult to control his actions which makes managing his maximalism especially difficult. Imugi intends to go through the storm and, unbeknownst to others, take the life of the god of gold. Nolan is pleased with his new achievement and brags about it to his subordinates who are delighted with what they see. Nolan took this initiative from Yule, who puts the maximization of rewards in the first place and not just the main goal of the mission. Before offering the treasure, Nolan decides to increase its value as much as possible. Perhaps thanks to this strategy, the villagers will be able to surpass the amount of rewards accumulated by Yule. The city's work is in full swing and does not stop. Many questions and great responsibility fell on Nolan's shoulders. His orders are carried out unquestioningly, which is not surprising because he gives them as clearly and rationally as possible. Emma and Dave left the city, resting for a while from the battles and indulging in the enjoyment of food. The detective-turned-warrior admits that his partner is much more resourceful than him, but because of this, he is also very dangerous. Without talking twice, he eats a whole can of provisions in one go, as if nothing had happened, surprising Emma with such an ability. Imugi zealously tries to get through the storm, despite the complexity of this venture. But the storm turns out to be stronger, destroying the protective poisonous layer that allows you to move somehow. He is already very exhausted and injured, and is frustrated that his skill with the pearl does not increase with use. Yule, who has been watching all of Imuga's actions, is disappointed that despite his opportunities, he can't improve his skills. Abilities will not get better if you hunt only weak prey. You need to deal with someone stronger. Reasoning turns into thoughts that Emma would be a suitable opponent for height. He just lies on a mountain of gold, thinking that Imugi is enough to be a petty villain and nothing more. The Swordmaster is still fighting the humans, who continue to try to seize the treasure. The battle is incredibly difficult for them with such a strong opponent. They try their best. The visibility of the battlefield is reduced due to the strategy of Jack and Dave trying to counter him. An explosion of incredible proportions occurred on the battlefield, blinding all the people there. 
This is not the time to rejoice at the illusion of success. First, you need to be convinced of your victory. In the fog from the explosion, Emma can be seen, barely able to withstand the force that descended on her. Even such a powerful explosion is not able to break through Jack's defenses, but he is surprised by the coordinated work of the attackers. Sitting in the shelter, Bruce thinks about the need for reinforcement in this situation. Jack amazes Emma by saying that she passed this test, which was obviously not easy. Confused, Emma instantly responds to her teacher's stern remark. A new instruction for her, saying that it is useful to unite if you are weak, surprises the girl. The comrades in the battle who have listened to Jack leave dissatisfied with their defeat in this battle. The satisfied goblin stands still, not looking back at the departing soldiers. Bruce begins to think about the words about the exam passed. Apparently, they were all checked for everything. The desert is still full of dangers. The descending storm does not abate in the slightest, blocking further movement. People are aware of all the risks of going further, knowing that their main danger is neither Yule nor the escaped Umugi. Dave has a plan on how to overcome this tornado looming in their way. His comrades do not yet know his idea, but he, despite his uncertainty, decides to try it in the hope that it will work. Gathering all his strength and will, Dave performs an amazing action, directing power to the tornado. With a wave of his gloves, he managed to raise the wind itself, dispelling the storm that hindered the passage. This sight greatly amazes his comrades. For the first time, they have seen a man control nature by his own forces in this way. But his plan fails to be implemented properly, and barely holding back the pressure, he remains trembling, standing still. Julie is amazed that the god of wind has begun to recognize Dave and grant a piece of his true power. It was Yule who was waiting for people behind the tornado, shaking the earth, surprising everyone with his presence. He is again pleased that his expectations have been exceeded. But those who have come can only misunderstand the situation in fear. Full of confidence, the guy is ready to start the last stage of his exam and plan. The new item allows him to teleport a person once to a place where he has already been. The movement puzzles Emma and Dave, but they are ready for battle and their gazes remain calm. Behind their backs is a satisfied enemy, whom they have not seen for a long time. Amugi is happy that his baits are still alive and in his hands. But only contemptuous glances were drawn upon him, full of condemnation and ready for battle. Uncertainty is sown in the head of a boy who wants to sow panic in the people who appear. The energy of this couple increased many times over in just one day and sowed panic already in Amugi himself. Not wanting to start a battle, they begin to talk about whether they met here because of Yule. An object from the discussion suddenly appears in front of all three of them, forcing them to switch their attention to himself. He plans to start a battle not with himself, but with himself, as the last boss of his exam. Imuji rushes into battle without hesitation and full of enthusiasm, surprising the others with his recklessness. But all the attacks are pointless, Yule skillfully dodges, without stopping the dialogue with the opponent. But Imugi himself finds time to talk during the battle, talking about his experiences in the past. The harder he beat people, the more they obeyed him. For him, these feelings are unforgettable. Yuli's guesses were confirmed. Imugi is really a wonderful villain, he openly admitted. The soldiers were almost completely out of ammunition and could not continue to fight. They just speculated about where the rest had gone. The plan to drive a dangerous criminal out of the city worked but there was no confidence in the victory over Yule. Emma fiercely confronted her opponent and tried to strike up a conversation, but she was too much inferior. Yuli did not care. He found time to laugh it off during the battle as if it were a performance for him. These three are incredibly strong and they have every chance of defeating the God of Gold, which Yule raised. If someone can at least hit this guy, then he will be lucky to go to the place where this God is.